football, there's one man he loves, Justin Hardy. My man's elusive. He can run great routes, get separation from the defensive back, and look at the pause, folks. This guy can snag the football. You gotta love this combination. Should be exciting today. Shane Carden broke the school touchdown record last week, and Justin Hardy's on his way to being one of the best receivers ever to play the game in FBS. Great atmosphere on campus this week after that huge win in Blacksburg. 17th all-time meeting. The Tar Heels have won 12, but the odds are even today. East Carolina won the toss. They elected to receive. So we'll see this electric offense for the Pirates right out of the gate. And that's what the fans here want to see, too. Is it rocking today? Look at the sea of purple. I love it today. This atmosphere is great. And there is a pretty good win. It's the second time that the ball has been knocked off the tee. In fact, there's a chance of showers here this afternoon. But as they say here in Greenville, when it rains, it's a purple rain. There's no question about it. That's Nick Weiler. Ready to kick off. Trevon Brown and Isaiah Jones back deep. And we're underway from Greenville. And the Pirates in their black uniforms today, the same uniforms they wore for the win last year at Chapel Hill to start at the 25. Shane Carton, who we talked about a lot already, the catalyst of this offense, completing 62% of his passes. Already over a thousand yards passing with seven touchdowns, just the two picks. The guy is a leader, fifth-year senior from Houston, Texas. They love him here. He's got such a good arm. Pre-snap read, folks. You're going to see some intelligence today at the quarterback position. And yeah, they're down worthy at the receiver position, but they got four or five guys that can catch the football. First play. Play action pass, drag route right over the middle to Hardy. Makes the catch. Great hands for that senior from North Carolina. More career catches than any active player in the country. First down. Now first and 10 from the 36 on this opening series after that 11 yard pickup. Breon Allen will get his first touch, looking for him on the left side. Makes a nice move, stays on his feet to the 40. Now brings it back to midfield and runs it straight out to the 46-yard line. Breon Allen, he is a tiny running back, and sometimes that comes into as an advantage. I'll tell you what, this kid was electric on that run right there. They're going to need that running game today. They, they don't care if they got to pass or run, but if they can get that running game going, it could be a lethal day for this pass offense. He's 5'8", 190 pounds. He's hard to tackle. Now they want the deep ball. Carton going deep down the middle of the field. It's caught. Touchdown. Trevon Brown, the true freshman. And the Pirates waste no time. What a great throw, great catch. The true freshman. It doesn't matter who runs the routes for this football team. Shane Carden has confidence in all of his receivers. And you see right there the great play that the young freshman made. 55-yard touchdown reception as Warren Harvey tacks on the extra point. Last year, Shane Carden and East Carolina dominated North Carolina with 603 yards of offense in that game. They've already got 75 on that drive. Look at the top of the screen. He got man-to-man -man on the top with Trayvon Brown. He goes inside. The receiver pulls the safety down, and it's a perfectly thrown football play right over the top of the strong safety. Watch this, get a nice press on the outside. Strong safety's got to take a better angle. If you get a quarterback that can drop dimes like that, it's going to be a long day for this North Carolina defense. He became East Carolina's all-time leader in completions and passing touchdowns last week. Ruffin McNeil has had a real luxury having Shane Carton around for the last five years. This is McNeil's fifth season and really reaping the benefits here in year number five. Well, there's no question about it. This kid is a master of this offense. And anytime you have a quarterback like that that can lead the show, a lot of great things can happen for this East Carolina team. Warren Harvey to kick it off for the Pirates. 
Playing from out in front now against their in-state rivals, and that's a penalty. Harvey kicks it out of bounds. Clay, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Free kick out of bounds. Will be placed at 35-yard line. First down. All this field, and the kicker kicks it out. I mean, it's like a momentum killer. How do you kick it out of bounds? You got one job. Goodness gracious. Come on, one four. You just don't like those guys because they didn't have to practice as hard as you when you I love kickers. Play. They took me out to dinner all the time. I like kickers. All right, we're going to see Marquise Williams for the first time and the North Carolina offense. He is a dual threat quarterback. Asked to do a lot in this offense. He really is. You know, not only is he the top passer on the team, they ask him to run a lot. He's the leading rusher on this football team. He's going to get a lot of action today against this East Carolina defense. Tight formation. They send Ryan Switzer, their sophomore, in motion. The junior from Charlotte wants to throw on first down, and it is complete. There's a low throw to Matt Hollins. He hauls it in. That's going to be a pickup of 11 yards and a first down out across the 45 yard line. TJ Logan in the backfield. He's going to get the first carry of the day for the Tar Heels. He's trying to push his way to midfield. Logan is the starter in what is a pretty deep backfield for North Carolina. Yeah, no question about it. He was the top running back in North Carolina in 2012. They also got Elijah Hood, who's last year's top running back out of North Carolina. They want to run up tempo so they get the snap off quickly. Play action pass over the middle. Williams! Had it intercepted at the 28 yard line. A bad throw, and Josh Hawkins, the former walk on who already has three picks this year, nearly had his fourth. If you're going to get the ball to tight end down the middle, you better not float it. Stick it on him early. He's lucky he didn't take a big hit there by Lennon. Very fortunate there that ball wasn't picked off by Hawkins. East Carolina has very little depth in its secondary, but the guys they do have have been pretty solid so far this year. Third down and seven for the Heels. Williams throws and it is complete to the 40 yard line to Jack Tab, the only senior starter on offense and the tight end will move the chance. It's a really nice job going to Tab for a second time here. See the pressure delivers a catchable football. Great grab by Jack Tab there. Back to the ground and it's Logan again. Logan rushed for over 500 yards last year as a true freshman. We'll also see a pretty good bit of Romar Morris. Chris Francis, and you mentioned the true freshman Elijah Hood. On that tackle, Brandon Williams, the inside linebacker. Second down, they're going deep downfield to Hollins. He has to make an adjustment and hauls it in at the six-yard line. Great catch by Hollins, who has had nice chemistry with Williams the first few weeks. Nice job. Just go up and get the football. Contact on both sides. Referees are letting them play. I'll tell you what, after a 91-yard touchdown last week, he might be one of his favorite targets for today's game. After the 28-yard pickup, first and goal, they throw again incomplete out of the back of the end zone. He's trying to hit Hollins again. Second down and goal. You know, Marquise Williams, I'll give him credit. He's taken a lot of shots over the last couple games, but he stands in the pocket and delivers the football. He's got confidence in his play and his ability to make the big throw. And how about this response after East Carolina scored so quickly? Inside the red zone, Williams to the four and driven down. So third down and goal now for North Carolina. It's a great tackle from the backside. Maurice Falls. He's a sub 4 5 guy. Rick Smith loves him on defense. See if they can dial something up on this third and goal. Now, the offense deservedly so got most of the credit for that fast start last week at Virginia Tech, but this East Carolina defense really was sharp last week, too. Ninth play of the drive for Carolina on their opening series. Top of the screen, 6 5 receiver. Let's watch it. Pressure. Williams gets away, throws. Incomplete. Intended for Quinshot Davis, but well covered by Hawkins. And it's fourth down. Yeah, Williams wanted to get the quick fade here. Great coverage, has to come back. There's pressure. Josh Hawkins, what can I say about this young man? He played 93 snaps last week, Clay. This kid's a ball player, former walk-on. So now the field goal unit comes out, Nick Weiler. One for one on field goal attempts. And he hits from 21. And now 
now we'll see ECU back on offense. North Carolina has won 12 of the 16 all-time meetings, but last year, East Carolina blew them out in Chapel Hill. Out to the 22-yard line, it's Travon Brown who had that TD reception on the opening series. Brings it back 22 yards. And here comes Shane Carton in the offense. There's Larry Fedora, the head coach for North Carolina in his third year. This is the seventh straight year, though, that he's facing East Carolina. And he told us this week, Anthony, this is the best team the Pirates have had. Yeah, you know, he, he's got a lot of respect for Ruffin. Uh, you know, I mean, he, he really likes what they've done with this program. And this has always been a great battle between these two schools. And two and two against East Carolina when he was the head coach at Southern Miss. One and one so far as the head coach of the Tar Heels. Play fake. Carton pressure. Two men get a chase. Carton gets rid of it incomplete. Pass was a little bit low. Coming back for it was Jimmy Williams. Who had a career day last week against Virginia Tech, as many players do. Let's take a look at the impact players. Now we already talked about Justin Hardy. He got the first catch of the game. He's going to be one of the big playmakers today. Pressure's on Brian Walker. He's been exciting. Two interceptions last uh, two weeks ago against San Diego State. He's going to be able a lot of pressure covering these receivers. Jimmy Williams. Nice run after the catch. Jeff Schottmer, the middle linebacker, finally brings him down, but it's a first down out to the 34-yard line. Couldn't believe the depth at the wide receiver position here. We talked about Cam Worthy not playing, but I'm talking about four, five, six different guys can go out there and catch the ball well for this quarterback. And Williams, a former walk-on. There are a ton of those guys on this roster. In fact, 30 former walk-ons that play and play significant time. Inside handoff, and Breon Allen is dumped near the line of scrimmage. This is the third straight Power Five opponent for East Carolina. They are three and one against the ACC since the start of last season. And Ruffin McNeil says, you know, we don't think anything's an upset anymore because we expect to beat teams like this. He does. They've recruited that way. They've built the program that way. And there's a process, and they believe in him. Right now, they're bearing the fruits. There's a loss of one, so second and 11 for the Pirates. For 32. They run it again. This is Chris Harrison with his first carry of the day. And he'll get about four or five. Schottmer in on the tackle. Hairston, the starter on the depth chart, but he did not get a touch last week at Virginia Tech. We expect to see more of him this week. Yeah, it's by committee for this team. They're going to roll in five different running backs. They're all going to get their chance and their shot to help this football team on offense. So what they do on third down. They're 37% on the year. Carton throws. Nice catch. First down and more near midfield. And there's a flag down as the junior Bryce Williams makes a nice play. 6'6", 250 pounds, a wide receiver and a tight end. We'll see what the flag's about. There is no flag on the play. It was an incidental face mask, did not grab. The result of the play is a first down. So the 12 yard pass play stands. I love when they get the football to the big tight end. They got a good one in Bryce Williams. Great athleticism and pulling his defender as he catches that football to get the first down. Get a touchdown on the opening series last week in Blacksburg. They roll out Carton looking downfield. Throws and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 43 by Brian Walker. Man, is that guy on a tear. He had two interceptions in the game against San Diego State, including one that he brought back for a touchdown 100 yards. He brings this back 20 to the 35 of ECU. Well, the one thing their defense has done is cause interceptions. This is their sixth of the season. Brian Walker was our impact player. He's going to be the one that makes the big play here. Miscommunication from the receiver. East Carolina's defense has to step up and make a stand. That is the 10th takeaway for the North Carolina defense this year. And now Williams shoots it out to Switzer, and he wants to pass to a wide-open man. Caught by T.J. Thorpe. Touchdown. Little razzle-dazzle for the heels, a 35-yard strike. 
And North Carolina's playing from in front for the first time. There's no question about it. Nice little reverse. Get the pass out. Switzer throws a nice ball. Look at the drive to get to the end zone. Listen, they're not holding anything back in this football game. They want it. They know this is a revenge game, and we're seeing it early from this offense in North Carolina. Here's Nick Weiler to the point after. Brian Switzer, the sophomore from Charleston, West Virginia, putting North Carolina in front. Switzer now. Has thrown two passes in his college career, and both have resulted in touchdowns. Yeah, they get that orbit motion behind the backfield, a quick swing pass, and look at all the defenders on, on, on East Carolina. Run up to him, and no one protects the court, the receiver down the sidelines. Little underthrown. I mean, he, you know, we got to can't critique him perfectly as a quarterback there, but he did a nice job. I saw his dad down at the sidelines. He's taking pictures. He's a media guy. It's good to see him. And T.J. Thorpe on the receiving end. His first game back from a broken left foot. He's had chronic foot issues going back to 2012. But that touchdown catch. From the goal line, Trevon Brown spun around at the 10 and dumped there. And North Carolina has the momentum now. ESPN, you bringing you college football prime time, presented by Five Hour Energy tonight at seven. The Arkansas Razorbacks hosting Northern Illinois. And Arkansas has had a super rushing attack the first three weeks. Already 14 total touchdowns. That equals their output from all of last season. Yeah, they got a real nice offense going early in the season. My former tight end coach for the Rams, Jim Chaney, is their coordinator. I know he loves having two running backs he can hand the football off to. Good atmosphere here in Greenville. Alongside Anthony back to Clay Mappet. North Carolina with the lead 10-7. Here's Anthony Scott getting his first carry, and that's going to be a loss of one. As Dewan Drennan, first freshman defensive lineman to start since Kareem Martin in 2010, makes the tackle. He's fun to watch. I'll tell you, this uh, defensive unit for North Carolina they feel they have something to prove here today I've been impressed by the defensive line early they controlled the line of scrimmage against East Carolina Carton feeling the heat on second and 11 going deep again and it's incomplete well covered by Brian Walker who had the interception on the last possession it was intended for Grayson so it'll be third down and long this defensive unit the coordinator Vic Koning, third year as defensive coordinator. It's a 4 2 5 scheme. It's the same defense that Virginia Tech has, which ECU kind of carved up last week. But so far, Tar Heels have settled down after that opening drive. Carton, pressure and hit. Tip down. Almost intercepted again at the 19 yard line. Now, Jimmy Williams was the intended receiver. A couple of guys got their hand on it, including Tim Scott and MJ Stewart. And now the Pirates will have to kick. East Carolina is very fortunate here. Shane Carton has the ability to keep the play alive. He feels that pressure coming. Great hit by the defensive line to put that pressure on. Wide receiver, if it hits your hands and it tips up in the air, that's always dangerous. Almost intercepted by this North Carolina defense. Brian Switzer back to return this Gregory kick, but there's a flag down. Tom McCreesh is our referee. It's an ACC crew today. Ball start. Offense. By half the distance to the goal. We'll repeat fourth down. This is a zone now, dangerous zone. When you have a punt returner in Switzer, who's one of the most dynamic returners in the game, when he gets the ball in this area, he can be dynamic. Let's see this quick kick, see if he can make some hay on this return. Tied at NCAA record with five punt return touchdowns last year. But North Carolina in the return game, just average so far the first two games of the season. First punt for Gregory, the big-legged transfer from Alabama. 
Boots it from out of the end zone. Backing off here is Switzer. He will try to return it. Looking for a lane. At the 50 steps out at the 48 of East Carolina. So good field position for the Tar Heels leading by three. It is when you talked about the momentum right now in this football game. North Carolina after that interception. You can see a little more pop in their players. And that's the one thing coaches were looking for. A little more energy. A little more one out of their players. A little more leadership. And you're seeing that right now in the Tar Heels. We talked to Larry Fedora. He said we used the bye week an extra time to work on fundamentals. Not so much game plan against ECU, but just work on ourselves. And now we're going to see a new quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, the redshirt freshman from Ohio for the first time. You got Marquise Williams getting in a flow in this football game. I don't know if I agree with Coach of taking him out with the momentum they have on offense right now. And the skill sets aren't all that different. Big play for the defense. As Romar Morris is hit in the backfield by the inside linebacker Brandon Williams. And it's going to be a loss of five. They love Brandon Williams. He is a force and he is not going to miss a tackle when he gets that chance. Quarterback's got to pull the ball out and run that football. Let's see if the young quarterback can get this offense back on track. Trubisky did not win the starting job in camp. There was a pretty good battle for it between him and Williams. Top recruit out of Ohio a couple of years ago. Wants to throw for the first time and does on the run, and it's a strike. To the 39-yard line, hauled in by Bug Howard, another big receiver at 6'4", 200 for North Carolina. Yeah, they have several receivers on this football team. That has length, long arms, and great hands. Quarterback's best friend is those tall receivers on the outside. Gainer 13, third down at two. And now a timeout, North Carolina. Timeout, North Carolina. That's their first timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout for the Tar Heels. Offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell making the move to go with Mitch Trubisky on this drive. Takes over the offense from Blake Anderson, who's the new head coach at Arkansas State. You've already said that you're not really sure why they decided to go with him here. Well, they might have had a plan prior to the game saying, listen, on this series, we're going to bring the new quarterback in, but you got to feel the flow of the game. To me, I don't know why he would take Marquise Williams out. It's going to be a first down as Austin Kroll with the reception. Kroll, true freshman out of Charlotte. His dad, Ricky, wide receiver for 17 years in the NFL, currently on the Panthers coaching staff. First down and 10 after the three-yard catch. Elijah Hood, number 34, back in the game in the backfield. Fake the run to him, stepping up to Trubisky, hit as he throws, incomplete. That was Switzer that he was trying to hook up with. And Jonathan White had good pressure on Trubisky from the defensive end spot. Switzer showing great speed in the slot. It really is a dangerous wide receiver for them, leads them with 14 catches coming into this game. But he's got that elusive quickness. You look at guys like Wes Welker, Wayne Prebeck, guys that can make the move inside, be quick, and catch the football well. Trubisky sprints up. Options it out to Morris and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain as Zeke Bigger, the Pirates' leading tackler through the first three games, on pace for a 150 tackle season makes it third down and 10. It's a great job by number 94 Jonathan White to stretch that play out and like you said Zeke Bigger finishes the deal. Trubisky trying to convert on third down gets it to Morris he's got the first down and more. Finally brought down at the 14 by Zeke Bigger. And Trubisky picks up the first on the Flare out into the flat. It's an 18-yard pickup for Morris, a 100-meter champ in high school. He turned on the Jets there. And now they're going to whistle this play dead. And North Carolina. Right to the snap. Timeout was called and granted. East Carolina. It's actually That's their first East Carolina timeout. calling that timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. Another 30-second timeout. 
Each team with two timeouts remaining. 6.48 to go here in the quarter. Let's go back to the previous play, Romar Morris. And Morris is the third, really, receiver in this. He dumps it down. East Carolina loses track of him, and they're not there to pick him up in coverage. And he gets himself a nice game and moves the chains. You got to like that out of the young quarterback, able to look over his progressions and dump it down. So, so far, so good with this quarterback change for North Carolina. You know, Larry Fedora has a ton of young guys like Trubisky. They're all over the roster young. Very few juniors and seniors still recovering from NCAA sanctions in 2012. Next year, Larry Fedora will have his full 85 scholarships. First and 10 after the timeout. They pitch it to Elijah Hood. He is a hard guy to bring down. It's like steer wrestling. He's six foot, 220 pounds. Highly touted out of Charlotte Catholic High School. He was. That's a, it was a great pickup for this Tar Heels team to recruit and get him here very deep at the running back position. Second and five. Hood again. He brought down a couple of yards shy of the first down. Bigger in on the tackle. They get three. So third down now for North Carolina. East Carolina's defense sees this kind of tempo every day in practice against their own offense. Right now, they're not quite getting on the proper guys to cover in these passing situations. Let's see if North Carolina can punch it in here. Third and short. 47% on third down this year is North Carolina. They've had trouble converting in the first half the first two weeks of the season. A three of four today. On third and two, it's hurt again. And he's got the first down. First down and goal to go for the heels inside the five. You got a big bruising back that can get outside on the perimeter. North Carolina did a nice job of sealing that off. It's going to take more than one guy to bring him down, fights his way to get that first down. Hood originally committed to Notre Dame but changed his mind. And this time, he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss on the play. And they think that Elijah Hood's role is going to increase as the season goes on. As a man is down in the end zone. Elijah Hood, he squats 605 pounds. I mean, this is not your typical true freshman. And North Carolina has an inexperienced offensive line already. And they're without their most experienced player, junior right guard Landon Turner today. He's got an injury. They've got a true freshman backup playing there today. It is Heck, the right tackle, the son of Andy Heck, who played 12 seasons in the NFL. Of all linemen to go down, it's unfortunate for them because he's the only one with any starting experience from last season. If he comes out for any extended period of time, you're looking at a very raw offensive line across the board for North Carolina. And that's part of the reason, as you alluded to, that Marquise Williams took so many shots in that San Diego State game. The O line just, they're still trying to figure it out there. They're a little unsettled up front. They are, and it's, San Diego State runs a lot of different looks on defense. And they weren't able to pick it all up. But again, when you lose your top lineman in Turner, who isn't playing today, their right guard, and now Heck is down. Hopefully he's not out for an extended period of time. You can see on the left part of your screen, his right ankle gets caught in the turf there into the grass. So Kiero Holtz, number 72, a junior out of Indianapolis, checks in at that right tackle spot. Second down and goal for North Carolina. Trubisky wants to throw, and he goes through the back of the end zone incomplete. Third down. East Carolina did a good this is the defense that held Virginia Tech to just 14 total yards in the first quarter last week. North Carolina has done a nut, much better job against this unit here today. Third and goal. Trubisky again incomplete. 
He overthrew Switzer. And the field goal unit comes out for the second time. Good pressure there by Zeke Bigger, the Mike linebacker and defensive end Jonathan White, who now we're starting to see him get into the backfield quite often with this East Carolina defense. Weiler hit from 21 earlier. This is from 22. And North Carolina again has to settle for three. Their lead is six. We got a second here. Let's go to Matt Schick and check in with him for the first time. Thank you, Clay. Here with Kevin Carter and his Florida Gators looking pretty good here. The Andrew of turnovers White early in Florida capitalizing. Keanu Neal scoop and score, Kevin. Opportunistic defense, knowing they had to make plays to give them a chance to win today. Florida with the 14-7 lead midway through the first in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Hmm. You know, Florida, after that battle with Kentucky last week, they took a lot of heat, especially Will Muschamp, the head coach. They needed a good showing, a good start today, and so far, so good. Well, they're, a much, they're a much better team than they were last year. There's no question about that. That is Caleb Presley. He's got an important role on the sidelines for North Carolina. He is the supervisor of morale. Yeah, he's going to be featured on College Football Daily this week. I can't wait. What he does is he wears a NFL jersey of former North Carolina Tar Heel football players. I think it's great. He's got the headset on, holding it down on the sidelines. Good return for Brown. Out to the 43-yard line. You can see why they're so excited about this true freshman here in Greenville. That is a 43-yard return for the Pirates. Well, he's, done, he's done it in the passing game. Now in special teams. Listen, when you get your chance to make your mark, go out there and do it. The young man not only breaking tackles, you see the great speed, still can't get him down as they knock him out of bounds. And this is what this offense needed to get that field position back after getting pushed back the last two series. What do you make of Cardin so far? Four of eight, 88 yards and a touchdown. Well, you had the miscommunication that cost them an interception. Let's see if they can put one together here. Get themselves a score. Cardin running out of time. Gets away, throws on the run. Comeback receiver is Hardy. First down to the 40 and down to the 35-yard line. Hardy is so good, so elusive. He's got great hands. He's got them big yellow gloves on. I mean, how do you miss those big balls? This kid catches everything. 21-yard reception for Hardy. Go back to the air this time. Bryce Williams gets away. Inside the 10. I love this kid. Old school rumble stumbling. He looked like Mark Bavaro there. After making that catch, I'll tell you what, he is a weapon in the slot for this football team. Back-to-back -back explosive plays. That one goes for 23. Actually, spot that football at the 11-yard line. First down, North East Carolina. Carton whips it toward the end zone, and Williams again, the intended receiver. This time it falls incomplete. The free safety, Tim Scott, number seven, in on the coverage. Tim Scott, six foot. Bryce Williams is six six. All you got to do is put it up there in a catchable spot. They missed that one, but that's going to be a matchup to watch as we see this game go through. Carden 133 through the air now. They have 144 total offense so far. They do right here, and it's out. Touchdown! The senior from Daytona Beach. And now they're mixing it up down on the field. Some personalities that are a little on the kilter. Hey, this is a rivalry now. These two teams, they don't like each other. You see that offense for East Carolina, how quick they can strike. North Carolina's defense has to be on their toes against this lethal offense. Two quick drives that have resulted in touchdowns for the Pirates. That one. Four plays, 56 yards in less than a minute. 
and East Carolina goes back in front by a point. Lincoln Riley, the 31-year-old offensive coordinator, has done a great job with this team so far this year and so far today. The 22 yards rushing isn't a lot, but the, the rushing touchdown, when it happened and how they got it, that's an instrumental rush for this offense. He will find a perfect balance. Like you said, he doesn't care how he gets it done. As Logan takes a knee and he gets some convincing advice from his teammates to take that knee. They'll start at the 25. It was Romar Morris saying, hold on. Don't bring it out of the end zone. Yeah, this will be an interesting drive. Now, they're going to go back to Mark Weiss Williams here at the quarterback position. Okay, he's been out a, few, a series. Long drive last time. Let's see if he can pick up where he left off because he was hot early to start this football game. Marquise Williams, three for six, 50 yards so far. Started six games last year when Bryn Renner got hurt, became the first North Carolina quarterback to lead his team in rushing in 45 years. He's got that dual threat ability. His team is down again, albeit just one. Logan trying to find some room, cuts it up, gets it across the 30 to the 31. Brandon Williams had a career high 14 tackles last week at Virginia Tech. Makes the tackle. It's a game of six for Logan. Speed the linebacker position for this team is incredible. Real nice run by TJ Logan there, getting that stretch play and getting himself six yards. Second and four, Williams steps up. Finds a crease, has the first down and more. Out to the 42. There's that ability we talked about with his feet. That was this was the planned run by North Carolina. 220 pounds. Now this isn't a small guy running the football. He's thick, he's hard to bring down. Great call, great mix-up, moving the chains there for a first down. After the gain of 11, it's Logan again. And he'll get two, second down and eight. Williams again in on the tackle. It's obvious offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell wants to establish the running game. He wants to put drives together. We saw a 10-play drive, move the football, and keep the ball out of East Carolina's hands. Williams along the sideline has a man open. It's Kendrick Singleton, and the officials say no, he's out of bounds. It looked like his left foot hit the out of bounds as he was catching the ball. We'll see the replay. Hard to tell from that angle. I thought the other angle Looked like he was in, but the officials were right on top of the play. North Carolina has converted four of six on third down. Williams tries to run for it. He comes up well short. There's Brandon Williams again. What a defensive series for the East Carolina inside linebacker. He's not a very big guy. 6 1 2 30. But the speed is amazing. I was a little shocked that Marquise Williams didn't try to race him to the outside towards the first down market to try to get that first down decided to turn it up and Brandon Williams is waiting to take him down now Tommy Hibbert will come out for the first time for North Carolina to punt fourth year punter fair catch called for and it bounces and checks up and the seven yard line so long field for Carton and company now the top-ranked Florida State Seminoles have a big one tonight against number 22, Clemson. On Saturday night, 8 Eastern time, 5 Pacific on ABC. And, of course, Jameis Winston suspended for the entire game tonight after those obscene comments made on campus. Florida State changed that suspension from just a half game to a full game late last night. And i got to ask you, is that because Florida State felt some pressure to show proper discipline in light of everything that's gone on with the NFL. I'd like, to, I'd like to see one of these schools step up and be proactive play, not reactive. Crowd wants a face mask, and they're going to get it. There's flags on the field, though. As Breon Allen took it upfield, and his head was jerked back. Might even have been a, a horse collar, too, depending on where the hand was. That kind of whiplash got to be a personal foul.
Personal foul. Face mask. Number 74 defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And Devontae Brown's got to understand. He's actually getting held there. Comes off. Got a chance to make a big play. You can. Oh my. Dangerous. Always hate seeing those face masks. Devontae Brown's got to be smart. He's actually played well in this game so far for them. He's got to be smarter as a football player. It's the first penalty against North Carolina today. First down and 10. Carton has it batted down. It was intended for Hardy, but MJ Stewart, the corner, was right there. The true freshman makes a nice play to bring up second down. I want to get back to Winston as Florida State has suspended him for the entire game. We saw East Carolina be very proactive today in suspending their star receiver, Cam Worthy, for two games starting today. Yeah, you know what? And this was something that happened in the summer, so maybe why not the first two games of the season? So I'm not sure how proactive they were. Out in the flat, this is Marquez Grayson. There is no operating room on that far side as Jeff Schottmer, the middle linebacker, steps up. Top returning tackler from last year for North Carolina. So now a third fairly long for the Pirates. And I talked to Ruffin McNeil before the game about that incident with Worthy, and it's something that happened. It's something they didn't even know about until game day, so it was the school making that decision, not the coaching staff. I'll say this about Ruffin McNeil. He is a high-character guy. He is always going to make the right decision. I applaud him for his discipline here. More flags. Contact. Number 96 defense. I got penalty. It remains third down. Ethan Farmer, the defensive tackle. And we need to see more of this in college football in the NFL. Coaches, even if it means losing a game, doing the right thing when it comes to discipline. Yeah, and he ran right over me on the field before the game and said, listen, let's talk about this because he wanted to make a point. That's not how the, the team is run. It's discipline, and he understands decisions have to be made, and he's a family guy. He cares about these players, a genuine care. He's done a great job. Jimmy Williams, we've seen him do that a few times today. That come back and quick run up the field after the catch, and it's another first down, a gain of 11 for Williams. And they're right back over the ball. And we've got 12 men on the field. I don't know if they're going to call it or not. There is no snap. There is no snap and no foul. We will reset and replay the down. That's interesting. North Carolina makes a substitution, but East Carolina didn't. So to me, when that player was running off the field, it should have been 12 men on the field. There is Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator. I think that's what he was arguing to the referee. Fifth year as offensive coordinator and just 31 years old. So even though he's wet behind the ears age-wise, he's been in this job for quite a while. Here's Allen. Give him six. Second down and four is MJ Stewart is credited with the tackle. Offensive line is doing a great job of opening up the perimeter on the outside. From Breon out, he's doing a good outside move to get himself those yards to running game again. Nice mix up and balance for this team so far in the last two drives. 49 seconds to go in the quarter. We'll see if they go back to the air downfield. They do. It's Hardy. Another big play to the 30-yard line. Justin Hardy had just four catches last week. His lowest output since 2011. He's got three here in the first quarter. That one picks up 19. Hairston. Nice run. It's going to be a game of about nine. As Dominic Green, the strong safety, brings him down. Time winding down here on the quarter. Mike Harris, the left tackle, wide receiver on the outside, doing a great job. These guys are blocking up the perimeter. And to go back to Hardy play, I'll tell you, there's receivers that catch the ball and go make plays. He understands where the defense is around him, and he gets that space. It's not operation. We will keep the play clock on the field. Please turn them off. So the play clock has gone haywire for the time being. We're going to try and fix that, but we won't have it for the time being.
That judge will keep the play clock on the field. He is standing in the end zone. Breon Allen in the backfield with Carton. They will start that play clock that you can't see. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Oh, it hit in the backfield at the 25. Third North Carolina tackle for loss, and that's Junior Nankandi from the Ivory Coast, moved to the United States not that many years ago. Boy, did he pick up football fast. It's great in-state rivalry between North Carolina and East Carolina through one quarter. The stats fairly even. North Carolina, their only touchdown came after that interception thrown by Carden. The defense for ECU held North Carolina to two red zone field goals in that first 15 minutes. And that's the difference. East Carolina is putting the touchdowns up. North Carolina is getting the field goals. Third down at six. Carden throws incomplete. Intended for Jimmy Williams, well covered in the secondary. And so now the field goal unit for the Pirates will come out. Warren Harvey, three for four on field goal attempts this year. He's got a long of 40. He had one blocked two weeks ago, missed a 37-yarder last week. And this will be from 42. Blocked. This is returnable. And so now good field position for North Carolina as Brian Walker on that return after it was blocked. It's a great job by their defense on third down. And then Condi. Watch this guy. Is he an athlete or what? Watch him get up, raise up. See his big hand as Paul there knocking it down. Right there in the middle, 44. Low kick. Didn't really get a lot of jump on that. Harvey's going to have to get the football up in those field goals opportunities. You see Walker's speed. Kick him run. That's a young, fast North Carolina roster. So a great special teams play by the Tar Heels. Gives it back to the offense. First down and 10 from the 45-yard line. Marquise Williams back in at quarterback. And he completes a pass to T.J. Thorpe. Boy, are the Tar Heels happy to have him back. He's had so much foot trouble the last few years. Second down and one. Romar Morris. In the backfield. And there you see Nan Condi, who, again, came from the Ivory Coast, went to high school in Georgia, has turned into a great Division I player. He's a specimen now. See too much body fat on that young man. He, he's definitely somebody that's going to be a big time player for this school. North Carolina back in plus territory, down a point. Williams out of the gun. Play clock goes inside of five. Morris. Get a hand from Morris. Third down. Check that. Second down for North Carolina here as Allie makes the tackle. Marquise Williams still a work in progress, Anthony. I, he worked with George Whitfield, the, the quarterback coach during the spring what they, they think he needs though is just more time and more reps and he's getting it this year this is his offense for the most part Thorpe again and that's a first down for the Tar Heels I mean we've seen Trubisky already here in this game but Marquise Williams is the start he is I'll tell you he's been on point the one thing I've seen so far on him is his ability to move in the pocket and keep his eyes down the field and if you can do that as a quarterback, you can find those open receivers come open late. Play pick. Williams hit, got rid of it, and it's going to be a loss on the play. He was able to get it to the escape valve. Jack tabbed the tight end, but still a loss of three. Tremendous speed on the outside. 
by number 51 Overton. And they talked about that. Rick Smith said, listen, we're going to bring that pressure on the outside. We feel like our ends can beat their tackles. And right there is a sign of more maybe to come in this game. Overton very fast, a 4-4-40. And he's playing with a sore hand this week, but it didn't seem to bother him there. Second and 13, pressure coming again. Morris on the screen, gets it to the 30, but no further. Here's Bigger again. Game of six, but boy, Bigger's been all over the field today for East Carolina. He became a starter last year because of injuries. He has developed into a great team leader. They say he is very mature for his age. Eighth in the country, averaging 12.3 tackles a game. He's all over the field for this defense. Here comes the blitz. Williams hit again. Incomplete. No flags. Josh Hawkins in on the coverage. And Williams picks himself up off the turf. Yeah, Williams now. He took a lot of hits two weeks ago. They bring the strong safety Ivy up, takes another shot. You see it here. He's unblocked. Too many for the offensive line to pick up. Something to watch on these hits from the quarterback position. You know, despite just three starters back, this defense has really played well this year for East Carolina. They force a field goal attempt from 46. It's a fake. The pass, man wide open at the 12. Touchdown, North Carolina. Eric Albright from the punter, Tommy Hibbert. And it's a North Carolina touchdown on the fake. That was great execution. Great call by Larry Fedora. He saw the last field goal, the rush, the pressure they brought, and that was really wide open. Great throw, great catch. Easy. Hibbard, the punter, also does the holding on field goals and PATs with a pretty pass to a wide open man. It's the second trick play we've seen from North Carolina in this first half. Think this game's important, though? All right, thank you, Matt. Meanwhile, back here in Greenville. North Carolina regains the lead after the touchdown catch by Eric Albright on a fake field goal. Both of the Carolina touchdowns have now come on trick plays. Yeah, you see the wing here. They bring pressure. Number seven doesn't fall back in the coverage. Gets a little aggressive there. Ivy, he lacks experience. He's played cornerback. Hasn't had the snaps. By for door and company. Catch him sleeping. Nice play call. Tommy Hibbert, who threw that pass. He's a senior, and as you mentioned, Albright, a grad student. Yes. Two veteran guys and a very young team come up with a very savvy play. The heels have some momentum again. We always talk about the smartest players on the field. They're the tight ends, of course. Oh, yeah. Bigger could say. <laughs> Alongside former West Virginia NFL tight end, Anthony Beck, to play Mavic. Here's Shane Carton. There you see his numbers today. He's throwing a touchdown and an interception. This offense has both of its touchdowns today because of big plays in both of the two drives. Yeah, last two series, they've come down the field quickly. Let's see if North Carolina's defense can make a play. Isaiah Jones, he's been fairly quiet today. He will get up the field for seven. Jones, second-year wide receiver from Austin, Texas. A couple of touchdowns in the first three games. Again, no Cam Worthy today for ECU. Breon Allen will move the chains. That's a gain of three. Cam Worthy before the game. Suspended for two by the program for a violation of the student conduct code on campus. During an incident that happened over the summer. Carton has some time now running out of time. Coming back to the football and making the catch of the 42 is Jimmy Williams. Jimmy now three catches. That one goes for six. He's got 28 yards on the day. I'll, I'll tell you what, Shane Carton, he will wait and wait. And he feels that pressure. He just gets it out. North Carolina's defensive line is so close. See if they can get to him here in this game. Free play here. 
it's going to be a first down for Hardy into plus territory at the 48-yard line. Yeah, it looked like North Carolina came offside. 43, defense in the neutral zone. Pounds decline. Result players a first down. It's Jesse Rogers, the defensive end. Cam Worthy, that is no minor loss either. He had six catches for 224 last week against Virginia Tech. And again, East Carolina playing without him today. This is Anthony Scott, the running back. Finds his way along that far sideline for a good run, and now a penalty flag comes in yep. on that North Carolina sideline. Maybe hit out of bounds. Got to be disciplined as a player. This is a game, a lot at stake, rivalry within the state. You have to be smart. You can't give away big yardage plays, especially against East Carolina's high potent offense. After the play was over, that ball personal foul. Play hit out of bounds, number 26. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That was on the defensive D tackle, Tyler Powell. See this late hit right here. Be smart. Powell's a true freshman, too, so he's got, you know, I'm not making any excuses, but you got to know as a player where you're at on the football field. And you cannot have it. I'm sure coaching staff will get on him. He's not in the game now, so someone's telling him something, I'm sure. North Carolina brings the pressure on Carton, picked up, and it completes the pass to the 21. And guess who? Vested Hardy again. What a great combination these two are. They just know and trust each other where they're going to be. Supreme confidence in the route running. Remarkable combination. Carton now six yards shy of 200 for the day. We still have 10 minutes plus to go in the first half. Look at the throw here. Pressure from behind gets it downfield, and he's just going to throw it away. So third down and four coming up for the Pirates. And there was Don Condi again, and he's been active here on defense. We've already seen him block the field goal attempt. And they'll have to continue to be active. they got to get to the quarterback. The pressure's good, but with Shane Carden, he's got that ability to let the play last longer and stay on the receivers. they got to get that pressure. And a man moved on the left side of East Carolina's line. Ball start, number 96 offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. He meant 69, that's Ike Harris. Returning starter at left tackle. Got to hold your water there. Got a big penalty on North Carolina side, and then right back they give it five-yard penalty. Well, that line has done a pretty good job protecting Harden so far this year. Only two sacks in the first few games. Carton complete. Trevon Brown, it's a sprint to the end zone. Touchdown. My goodness. What speed after the catch for the true freshman. My goodness. Second touchdown catch for Brown. One man down, the next one step up. See if he's run a switch route. Bam, put your foot in the ground and beat this guy to the point. 26. Takes a poor angle, Dominique Green. And the true freshman knows what to do with the football after he catches it. I mean, heck, you know, you don't want to miss too many games if you're a player on this offense because somebody's going to step up and take your spot. Extra point is good for Harvey. North Carolina ranked just outside the top 25. East Carolina after that upset against Virginia Tech last week. The Hokies ranked number 17 at the time. They certainly got some votes for the top 25. Essentially, even money 
in this game yes. coming in, and we're seeing it play out that way. Very close contest so far. Ten minutes to go here before halftime. East Carolina has regained the one-point lead. Omar Morris on the return. ESPN brings you college football prime time presented by Hampton Hotels. The Mississippi State Bulldogs are in Baton Rouge tonight to take on Les Miles. And number eight, Mississippi State versus LSU tonight. There's the SEC West. And we saw LSU last week against Louisiana Monroe. This is certainly a different test, a stiffer test for the Tigers. You're right, Prescott, the quarterback for Mississippi State, will have his hands full with Les Miles' defense. They're playing outstanding this season. Mitch Trubisky coming in for the second time for North Carolina at quarterback. Play clock ran out. And again. Play game, number 10 offense. Five yard penalty, remains first down. Got to have the awareness. You switch the quarterback up. You got the red shirt freshman in now. The first play, they get the ball back. Delay a game. Again, I'm not a proponent of switching quarterbacks in and out. Well, this is what Trubisky has done. He led the Tar Heels in a 13 play drive, the first series he was in. Resulted in a 22 yard field goal. After the penalty, first and 15. Missed his man. It was Mac Hollins. Second down and long. And you don't have drives to waste. And he's a good young quarterback. They had a good battle in camp. But Williams won it. You're talking about a game now, 21 20. Every series has counted so far for both of these teams. Trubisky turned down the Buckeyes. To come to Chapel Hill, they like his future. Just lacks experience. He tosses to Hood here. No running room. As an East Carolina defense bows its neck, and again, Zeke Bigger leading the way. Third down and long. Bigger brings it, man. I, I love this kid. He's got that neck roll on, and he is using his body to bring down the big running back for North Carolina. Junior from Gastonian. Here comes that crowd at Downey Thickland Stadium. Well, you know East Carolina's going to draw something up. Third and 13. Let's see if this young quarterback can handle it. Fourth down. Intended for T.J. Thorpe. And Trubisky was off target. He was off target. That's two passes that he's been off target in this drive. They end up punting. I'm telling you what now. You don't want to give East Carolina the ball back like that quickly. They got the hot hand right now on offense. What's Larry Fedora saying to his redshirt freshman? I'm not sure. I'm thinking, where's Marquise Williams? I mean, to me, he's the guy that should be in the game. I understand they have a plan, but you got to feel it. And to, me, and to me, in this football game, I would keep Williams in as your full-time starter. Tommy Hibbert with the rugby-style kick. Hardy calling for the fair catch at the 31, and that's where East Carolina will have it. Capacity crowd of 50,000 here in Greenville. Many of them in purple and many dressed like pirates. That's the uh, Boneyard section here at Downey Ficklin Stadium. Of course, yesterday was International Talk Like a Pirate Day. I love it. It's a great energy in this crowd. Fans are rowdy and dowdy. As Pirates trying to make North Carolina walk the plane. Fan it out to Brian Allen. And the screen results in a big first down for ECU out to the 49-yard line. Give him 18 yards. There's no room for punting in this football game. You're going to give the ball back to East Carolina. Well, guess what? They're going to try to get more explosive plays. A little screen pass, well set up. They're looking to score. Did he make that catch? No. Isaiah Jones tried to get his arms up underneath him. He's a little low on that crossing line from Shane Carter. I'll tell you, it had to be a pinpoint pass. I mean, wow, great effort. 
Nice try by Jones. ECU 2-1 coming off that big upset of Virginia Tech, number 17 last week. Also beat North Carolina Central and a close loss to number 21, South Carolina. Pressure. That one is a catch. Trevon Brown. Is this kid not showing us something today? I mean, that catch right there, folks, that is big time with the hands. It's a seven-yard reception, brings up third manager. Yeah, I, he is the guy that has emerged here today in the absence of Cam Worthy. It's a true freshman. It's unbelievable. The players that are in this game that can make plays for both teams. Two receivers to either side, sprinting out, Carden to the right. Cox's arm fires downfield. Jimmy Williams can't bring it in. There are two defensive backs. Brian Walker and Dominique Green there. And Carton Williams couldn't hook up. They tried to pop it over, really. It hits him in the hands before the defender's ever to knock it down. Should have been a catch. But I'll tell you what, our impact player, Brian Walker, another big play by that young man. So the Pirates will have to punt. Ryan Switzer, ever dangerous, standing at the 10 yard line of North Carolina. First true freshman in North Carolina history to earn All-America honors last year as a punt returner. ECU trying to keep it out of the end zone, did they? No. It's going to be a touchback. A 44-yard punt. ECU trying to pin the heels deep, and they can't keep it out of the end zone. In the game. It has. Marquise Williams comes back in at quarterback, hands off to T.J. Logan. And it's a gain of two. Jonathan White making the tackle. Now we're starting to feel some light raindrops here in Greenville, and the wind has picked up considerably. And there was rain in the forecast today. Second down and eight. Logan. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a loss of two. Well played by Montes Overton. Again, his speed, he is hard to beat. And he loses contain of that play, and he's still able to chase the tail back down. Very athletic outside linebacker. Rick Smith, the defensive coordinator for the Pirates. Came back to the program a couple of years ago, doing a great job with this unit. Williams. Wow, he gets hammered at the 25-yard line by Brandon Williams. These linebackers are having an outstanding day for the Pirates. It's a gain of six, but Williams really paid the piper. Yeah, you get good push in the, po in the pocket. You might as well put a yellow cap on number 24 because he's bringing the thump. Look at his hit right here. Oh, both of them, him and bigger. I love these linebackers, and I'll tell you what, I'm an offensive guy, but anytime I can see defensive players laying the smack down, I love it. So the ECU defense forces North Carolina to go three and out. Tommy Hibbert's punt. They're caught by Hardy at the 39-yard line. I, I really can't figure out Virginia Tech. The beat again today. It's a couple of weeks after that huge win of Ohio State. Here's their Taco Bell game track. 21-20. East Carolina leading. It's 5.59 to go here before halftime. 78 combined offensive plays. 518 yards combined of total offense. Now Shane Carden and the Pirates have it. For Endoran. That's going to get six yards. It's a penalty as Quay Johnson is tackled out across the 45. Be interesting to see We're if that calls a hold here. Because that was a late flag, and that wide receiver was blocking that about 30 seconds before he pulled that flag out. Holding offense. Ten yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Remains first down.
The late call. He was thinking about it. He wasn't sure if he wanted to call that or not. The wide receivers got to keep them hands inside. Again, first and 20 is not the ideal situation, but when you have an attack like this, there are advantages to coming back from that deficit. So a loss of essentially 17 yards of that play as they spot it back inside the 30 at the 29. from Lexington, North Carolina, getting better every week. Give him 30 yards and a big ECU first down. Great job getting on the perimeter. Lead block by number 22, Harrison. Harrison, great job. Carton looking to throw, comes to the left, and it's caught and dropped at the 30-yard line. It was Trevon Brown who couldn't bring it in. See that last run. Great job by the cut block there by the guard. Running backs leading it up front. Run it through. Look at this hole. Well blocked, well designed. And it was first and 20. You're able to get first down. Got to be in those lanes if you're North Carolina's defense. Can't have those big runs when you knock them back for first and 20. Carton gets rid of it and throws it behind Hardy. Now a penalty flag. Nazira Jones going to be called for the hit on Shane Carden. He roughing the passer. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 90. 15 yards from the previous long scrimmage. Automatic first down. Again, as a defensive lineman, you must have timing. The ball comes out. It's close. You can't have your hand and arm up in the neck, in the head area. They're going to call that every time. Breon Allen, nowhere to go. Met by a host of North Carolina tacklers. No gain, second down. Coming up here for EC with exactly five minutes to go before halftime. You know, we haven't seen the tempo from the offensive coordinator, Lincoln Riley, that we saw against North Carolina last year. ECU ran a school record 101 plays against the Heels a year ago. So far today, 40. North Carolina, incidentally, has run 41 plays. Yep. I'll tell you, it's been high flying on both sides. It's really who's going to stop who and, and those opportunities. And now Carton and the offense call timeout. a timeout. He's Carolina. That's their first timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. Lincoln Riley, he's got to be on a lot of program shortlists because he's a young coach that has accomplished a lot already. And he has certainly brought Shane Carton along because when he first came to campus, Carton was given very little. They were very conservative with him, and they have developed him, and as he has grown, this offense, this program has grown. Well, he's a Mike Leach disciple, uh, played and coached at Texas Tech. Uh, you're right. I mean, listen, this is the wave of college football. These are the offenses that are drawing these high school, these athletes, these skill position players to these universities. And, you know, we talked to... Head coach McNeil, he said, you know, when they're when they're out there recruiting, you know, they don't throw for a living or they throw for a living. It's not a hobby. Right. So that's the sell. They can get these skilled athletes here because it is fun and gun offense. And again, uh, East Carolina not quite at the pace, at least not yet, that they had last year against the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. But you can see that both teams have run a lot of plays. That's why we're still playing here in the first half. And. This game is an hour and 45 minutes old. Second down and 10. Carton pumps. Now hit ball comes up. And the Pirates are going to recover it back at the 39. But Carton takes a big wallop. 
and they nearly turn it over. That's a loss of 13 on the play, as Ethan Farmer was very disruptive for North Carolina. You gotta have a ticking clock in your head as a quarterback. You gotta understand if you're gonna run a fake slip screen and look deep, that that pass rush is gonna be coming there. You can't hold the block the entire time. The right tackle does what he can, but you gotta have that internal clock to get the ball out. Now flags all over the place. Ball start. Number 68 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Penalty on the right guard, Trey Robertson. That last hit that Carton took, it was actually Norkeithus Otis that planted him. And Otis was a game-time decision today. Big defensive end for the Tar Heels. They are so glad that they were able to get him into the game. He did not play against San Diego State a couple of weeks ago because of a hamstring injury. What turned out to be a promising drive for East Carolina has knocked them out of field goal range right now. Third and 28, they run it. It's Allen. Finds his way to the sideline, and he's... As a defense for North Carolina, third and long situation, you gotta know that the running back's gonna get the ball here. Really untouched all the way through, great blocking. But again, these are the inconsistencies we've seen in the tape from North Carolina through the first two games. And it's unfortunate, because they had him in a situation, Clay, where all they had to do was make a stop and they get the ball back and it turns into six for East Carolina's team. The biggest thing for Carolina defensive coordinator Vic Koning this week was we have to stop the run. See if they can get something going after consecutive punts on offense. Harvey through the end zone, it's a touchback. Don't forget, coming up tonight on ESPNU, college football primetime presented by five-hour energy, Northern Illinois against Arkansas. And Arkansas, of course, playing in that brutal SEC West. I really think that it's a much improved Arkansas football team. I, we've seen that through the early weeks. However, because they play in the SEC and they play in specifically the SEC West, their record at the end of the year may not reflect that quite as much as it should. Well, that running game is going to help them, but like you said, once they get to the meat of the schedule, that's when they'll be tested. Marquise Williams, the signal caller for this series. And he is punished again, just shy of the 30-yard line. He gains four, but there's Brandon Williams to lay a lick on him again. You know what? There's one disadvantage for a dual-threat quarterback. You have to be smart as a runner. And sometimes when you run up the middle, you got no choice. But right there, those are blows you cannot take. There or in the game, it's going to prove itself a problem as you get into this game into the second half. T.J. Logan takes it wide and he takes it for a first down. That's a good run for the sophomore out of Greensboro. It's a 10-yard pickup. And North Carolina will try to put points on the board here before halftime down eight down. Screen play. Stiff arm after the catch by Bug Howard. He's pushed out bounds and out. Penalty flag spraying all over the field again. Yeah, Lennon's got to be smarter than that. Doesn't have a lot of experience, but he's older player, a junior. After the play was over, that ball late hit out of bounds. Number 31 defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. ECU had uh, 13 penalties last week, still beat Virginia Tech. But this is just a bonehead of him. Yeah, he's already outside on the white. You see it there. He's about to get out of bounds. You know, personal fouls to me, Clay, are just selfish plays by an individual. They shouldn't happen in a football game. And we've seen now both teams hurt themselves on those plays. This team with five penalties. North Carolina in plus territory. Under three minutes to go, ball comes out and then recovered by Williams. Uh, that was almost a turnover. Maurice Falls, the weak side linebacker, he's on the preseason watch list for the Butkus Award. Yeah, anytime you're matching up a tailback against him, 
that's a win every time for Falls. Too much power, too much speed, a lot to ask a tailback to do. Screen again to Logan. Strips a tackler. And stopped at the 50-yard line. Third down and a mile. It's a loss of two. And there is big Terry Williams. They call him the Swamp Monster here in Greenville. 6 1, 353. He was unstoppable in that game with the Hokies last He's week. He's got quickness now. The big man can move. Great lateral quickness. He needs a blow, though, on this third down. They say he squats 600 pounds, benches 500 pounds. Unbelievable. Third and 22. Williams fires incomplete. And there is plenty of time before halftime here for Shane Carton to do some more damage. There's no question about it. Two minutes and two seconds is a lifetime for this offense. Great job, though, flushing the quarterback out of the pocket by East Carolina's defense. And again, getting the ball back and an opportunity to potentially score again. Hey, that ECU defense has really dialed it up. Third straight punt now. Short tackler. Short tacklers, a lot of team speed. I'll tell you what, they're only going to get better. Good kick by Hibbert. Uh, they can't keep it out of the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Anthony Scott, the true freshman, checks in at tailback. Carton sets to throw and does, and nobody home. The closest receiver was Justin Hardy. There are a lot of NFL scouts in this building today, Anthony. Yep. Uh, Carton has a good arm, not an elite arm, but does he have a chance to play at the next level? The thing that makes his arm good is his decision process, getting it out of his hands quick enough so he can deliver an accurate pinpoint football to his wide receivers. That's what he's shown me. He can make all the throws, but his timing, timing is impeccable. Shovel pass. Allen. Tons of room. Penalty flags behind the play. And Allen to the 42 of North Carolina before he's dragged down from behind. And that's unfortunate. That play call, folks, was spectacular by the 31-year-old offensive coordinator. But there was a hold out in the middle of that run. It's Lincoln Riley. That look says it all. This one's coming back. Nothing worse than a drawing it up perfectly, setting that play up. They probably worked on it, waiting for that ideal time to call it, and they get a hold. Holding, 74 offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Second down. Taylor Hudson, the center. Yeah, Hudson, he's just setting his pace here, eyeing up his defender. And right there, he's pulling the front. He didn't even have to do it, folks, honestly. And you got to have that awareness as a blocker to understand listen we got a pretty fast tailback behind me all i got to do is get my big body on you and the play's over during the play the change moved we'll have to go to replay to determine the spot so we're gonna have to do some bookkeeping work here and use the video replay to do it again jack kramer is upstairs he will help with that well it's been dangerous right now for north carolina's defense a big run the last series for a touchdown they give up an explosive play you see here again if this play wasn't called a hold, this was another one. Again, if he just doesn't even hold them, it's tough to wrap yourself around and turn as a defender and try to make that block. All in all, East Carolina's offensive line is an upgrade over last year. They brought in a couple of junior college transfers this year. Dante Levingston, Quincy McKinney. They're more athletic up front. They're smart up front. All in all, they've done a great job protecting Carton to put up the kind of numbers he has this year. That's a great point. You talk about athleticism. Last year, they lost their two all-conference guards from to graduation, and they were mashers. They were big people leaders. And like you said, the athleticism up front for this offensive line is, is shown with all these shovel passes and these perimeter runs that you see this offense like the food. The numbers today, 353 yards, and they're still in the first half and East Carolina you know they're a, they're a team that might be in the conversation late in the year remember the highest ranked champion from the group of five will play on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day maybe it'll be ECU if they can win the American they are in the American now after playing in Conference USA for several years going to play the previous last scrimmage was with 24 
the foul occurred in advance of that spot. So we would go 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll remain second down. All right. East Carolina made some noise with the win over Virginia Tech last week. If they take care of North Carolina here today, there are going to be a lot of a lot of people talking about this Pirates program. There's no question about it. And what an upgrade for the American Conference. You know, last year they had success with Louisville and uh, Central Florida. Now they bring in East Carolina. It's great timing. Yep. And it really does give that credibility for a conference that's looking to get be a part of that Power Five. They have a bye next week before that first ever American Conference game against SMU. Minute 34 to go before halftime. Carton hands it off. Allen is driven down hard at the 25-yard line, a gain of four yards. And the clock continues to run. Again here, they'll pass here. They'll try to get a big play. The clock is ticking. But there is plenty of time when the clock stops after a first down. East Carolina with one timeout remaining. North Carolina has a couple. Comes the pressure. Carden unloads. Intended for Isaiah Jones. What a catch! Isaiah Jones reaching up over the top of the defender. Hauls it in. Donnie Miles was there step for step, but Jones made a great athletic play for a gain of 39. It really was good coverage, and I got a feel for the North Carolina defensive back there, but way to go up and fight for the football. Jones is one of them quiet guys at wide receiver. He makes a lot of plays for this East Carolina team. See the numbers from Brown, Hardy, Jones. I'll tell you what, that's a pretty good distribution, if you ask me, from a quarterback's position to spread it around to all three of those young men. Each team with one timeout remaining. 43 seconds to go before halftime. Carton off his back foot just throws it away. That's the thing about Carton. He's never going to make too many big mistakes that hurt the offense, that change the feel of the game. And he understands in this situation also, they're getting close to field goal range. If they don't get that big play down the field, you know, let their kicker get, make an attempt to get themselves a field goal. Allen again. They're certainly inside field goal range now as that's marked down at the 28-yard line. 32 seconds to go in the game. As Allen has to come off after losing his helmet. Again, those rush lanes now against this defense are getting bigger and bigger. Something to be watched. See the adjustments in the second half for North Carolina. I don't think the clock started. Figure out how much time's left here. It might be a runoff of time here because Allen took his helmet off. It didn't come off accidentally. During the play, an ECU player's helmet came off. ECU has decided to take the th their third and final timeout so that we do not have a 10 zap. There would have been a 10-second runoff. ECU decides instead to take the timeout and keep the clock at 32 seconds remaining. Allen's helmet. It pops off right there at the end. And this buckler helmet up. It looked like he had a, a headlock over the helmet, pulling it off. Again, that's a crucial 32 seconds, third and one. You have no timeouts now, so you got to be cautious of leaving enough time if you're going to try to attempt to go for a touchdown to score the, the big points or be cognizant of the situation so you can at least get a field goal. There's no question there that that helmet came off accidentally, but instead of having that 10 second runoff, that would have uh, shortened the play, uh, shortened the game clock. They decided to take that timeout, so Ruffin McNeil's team with that timeouts now here in the half. By the way, Harvey has attempted one field goal today of 42 yards, and remember that was blocked by Non Condi. 
And you see Lincoln Riley here. He's telling these guys, all right, we're third and one, guys. We're going to run this one play. When we get the first down, let's get on the football fast and have a play design ready to go so they don't burn valuable time off the clock. They're going to pass on third and one. Hauled in by Williams. Jimmy Williams. We'll spike it here. Yeah, throw it down, stop the clock, get the first, fresh first down. Clock stops anyway. They spot it at the 20. Could be a fake, could be a fake clock here, but I don't think they'll be that crafty. There it is. And they will stop the clock with 22 seconds to go before the half. It's a great catch. These receivers, man, I'll tell you. Impressive. Every one of them. So this offense, of course, is an up-tempo offense. This two-minute drill that they're running, this is right in their wheelhouse. It is, but, you know, just got to be cautious when you catch the ball, how much time, where you're at, does the clock stop, if you've got a first down, get out of bounds. A lot of little details you got to have in place when you run this two-minute offense. Carton locks it up toward the end zone. Man in the end zone, batted up and almost intercepted. Brian Walker, who already has an interception today, and his hand on that one, number 28 for North Carolina. And Brian Walker now, he's done an excellent job in this football game. He's going to be challenged multiple times, and we talked about it being an impact player. If you want to make an impact, make a play. This young man stepping up to the challenge. Clay's making me look good. He's making me look good yeah. on that play. And that was your call before the game. So now the 10th play of this drive for ECU with 16 seconds to go before the half. Pirates out of timeouts. Carolina has one remaining. Chris Hairston in the backfield to the right of Park. Looking to throw. Fires across his body. Caught touchdown. Brandon Bishop. Another country heard from in that wide receiving court. A 19-yard touchdown catch. I mean, you're talking about big play right before the half. You're thinking Hardy, you're thinking Jones. Oh, yeah, well, let's go grab number 15, Bishop off the bench. Son, go run a crossing route and go catch a touchdown at the end of the, right at the, end of the half. I love it. I'll tell you why. Confidence. Carton says, listen, if you're going to get in the ball game, go catch the football. Ten plays, 80 yards in a minute 46 to give East Carolina a 15-point lead. Played 55 points, and we got a whole half to play. Kind of squib it, fielded at the five-yard line by T.J. Logan. And he gets it to the center of the field, and he stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And they're still one second on the clock, so time for just one more play. Might have come up at halftime. We'll break down this first half, this marathon first half. Also, Virginia Tech in a thriller with Georgia Tech today. We'll have the highlights. And we'll take you around the top 25, Florida, Alabama, Virginia, BYU, some big games today. Marquise Williams. And they're going to go down into the locker room. Trailing by 15 points. East Carolina. 443 yards of total offense. Shane Carton, three touchdown passes. Seven total touchdowns in that first half, but East Carolina leading by 15 here in Greenville. What kind of adjustments did that man talk about to his guys at halftime? Well, I think for one, you got to be a tackling team. You got to be able to make the tackle when it presents themselves and get around those guys so they don't have those big plays. You gave up a big run, a big play in the passing game when you had opportunities to tackle the runner. You got to be better on that position of the football. North Carolina will start with the football, and they will start from the 25. Now remember, the Tar Heels overcame second-half deficits to beat Liberty 
and San Diego State already this year. Try to do the same thing here in the second half as you look at the first half stats. And what a in grueling first half hour that was because it lasted two hours and 15 minutes to get 30 minutes of game action in. I'll tell you what, this pace has got to slow down. If I'm North Carolina, you've got to find a way to put drives together. They had a nice 10 play drive way back in the first quarter. You've got to be able to come out and do that. Keep this East Carolina offense off the field. Marquise Williams will start the second half at quarterback and he hands to TJ Logan a good run on first down. He gets 11. Dominique Lennon, the free safety, made the tackle. Logan had seven carries for 28 yards in the first half. That's a good sign here for North Carolina. They got to get going offensively. Now Williams under pressure and gets the throw off and it's complete. Caught it around the 38-yard line by Quinshot Davis, the big veteran receiver. That's his first reception today. Yeah, you know, if he's a guy that you want to get the ball to, being the length and how tall he is, it's been tough. The pass rush has been effective for East Carolina. They got to find a way to get the ball to their playmaker outside. 117 career catches for Davis, 16 career touchdowns, fourth all-time at the school, but he's been held in check. Now Williams wants to run it. Bounces off the tackler, he'll walk out at the 44-yard line of North Carolina. A few yards shy of the first down. There's Zeke Bigger, who was very good in the first half. That's like they got it as Williams plunges ahead. North Carolina was embarrassed last year by East Carolina. Prior to the snap, the head coach of North Carolina recorded the numbers the timeout. Huh. So the Pirates with a monumental victory a year ago trying to do it to the Tar Heels again. On third and two, Williams has it intercepted. Picked up by Zeke Bigger. Touchdown Pirates. A 45-yard interception return and East Carolina with a huge statement here to start the second half. That's not the start North Carolina coaches wanted to have out of their offense. Again, that play was all started by the pressure. Brandon Williams gets in the face of Marquez. Williams there on that pass. And Zeke Bigger, he knows what to do with the football. Warren Harvey for the extra point. It's disappointing. You know, you, you have those opportunities in the game. You get the first down. We call the timeout. That's something I know for sure coach wants to take back. Let's go back. Defensive coordinator this. Rick Smith. He's going to bring that pressure on the outside and watch Zeke Bigger. Look what I found on this play here. Just plays in his zone, sees the crossing receiver, steps in front. House call, and Brandon Williams is pointing, turn around, son, give me a block. And he gets it at the end there. Well done. Those two guys are the heart and soul of this East Carolina defense. Well done. 12 tackles. And a pick six for Bigger. Elijah Hood, the wrecking ball running back, will get three on first down. Terry Williams makes the tackle. Boy, there's a lot of beef there. Elijah Hood and Terry Williams line anymore in second down and seven. But Rick Smith came back to the ECU program two years ago to head the defense. He was the Pirates secondary coach for five years under Skip Holtz and then went with him to South Florida for three years. He's done a great job with this unit. There's a catch out at midfield. Williams complete to Bug Howard. He's got a 40-inch vertical lead. Used it on that play to pick up the first. Yeah, high point. I mean, they got two receivers that are 6'4". Bug Howard on the other side. Quinshot Davis. you got to find a way to get these two the ball. Gain of 23. Play fake. Williams. I right, just overshot Howard that time. Even at 6'4". That was too tall. Yeah, but to credit the quarterback there, the wide receiver stopped running. He saw the safety come down and caused an overthrow. You'll see here. Watch him come out of his route. Kind of slows down. Got to keep running. I know he feels the defender coming at him. 
But again, let the quarterback put it on the back shoulder. It looked like it would have been behind him there. Might have had a shot. Williams on the draw. Well shy of the first down, so third and long coming up. As Jonathan White, the defensive end, makes the tackle. Now North Carolina on third down. Started out hot. They were four of their first five. They are 0 for their last seven on third down. Really been the difference in the second part of this game. Nice catch and good awareness by Mac Hollins, the sophomore, to keep his feet in bounds and pick up 13. He walked on last year, was a special teams captain. They love his energy. I'll tell you what, Marquise Williams is impressive. He can throw the football. He's very patient in the pocket. Just like what he does. They just got to get it going on offense. 21. Omar Morris. Get a couple before Bigger knocks him down. North Carolina talked about their second half comebacks the first two games. They don't want to make a habit of this. As Morris will pick up the first down and bang his way inside the 15 to the 13 yard line before Lennon and Ivy combine on the stop. Now we're seeing this offense move the football. That's a gain of 21 for the Heels. Good drive here. They're starting to get some plays, accumulate some yards. That's what they need to do. Design quarterback play to the two-yard line. First down and goal to go now for North Carolina. And they're moving the ball effectively, and you go back to that timeout right on that quarterback sneak when they got the first down. This could have been the previous drive. Tar Heels moving right into this student section. Ninth play of the drive. Full start. Number 72 offense. Five yard penalty. Three minutes first down. It is loud down in this corner. It's the boneyard, baby. Those fans are getting hyped up. See a purple out here. Making the noise. Getting the tackle to jump off sides. This offense must come up with six in this drive. Williams to the end zone. Incomplete. Quinshot Davis. The intended receiver, Dietrich Allen, in on the coverage. I like the play call, though. You got the big receivers on the outside. Give them the catchable ball. Again, Marquise Williams puts it just outside. Can't reach it with the one arm. Quarterbacks have to love throwing the guys that big. There's no doubt about it. Having that kind of luxury on the outside is key. Second and goal. Williams pitches it out to Morris. Cuts it up. Touchdown. North Carolina. They needed that response. And they take it into the student section end of the stadium for six. They have attacked the perimeter on this drive, and it's treated them well. You see the option run. Nice little flick out to Morris. Does a good job. Runs it in for the touchdown. Weiler's extra point makes it 42-27. They needed to put together a 9-10 play drive because you keep that offense off the field for East Carolina. Let's see if the defense can come up big with a play. Get them off the field on third down. Trevon Brown brings it from about a yard deep out of the end zone. And he's cut down at the 18. That's where East Carolina will go to work. Celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All state makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds, which field goal and extra point kit. To date, all state has contributed more than 3.4 million dollars in scholarship money 14 points scored to start the second half in just three minutes and 11 seconds this is the kind of game it's been today folks isaiah jones to start this series for ecu with the catch des lawrence knocks him out but it's a pickup of eight yards for the pirates second down and two 
He really spreads the ball out great. The distribution between the receivers, who he goes to, he doesn't really favor anybody at the wide receiver position. This is the first offensive possession of the second half for ECU because the Pirates got a pick six to start the half. Breon Allen, he has stood up and driven back. Sam Smiley. He's had an injury-plagued career in North Carolina. Missed 15 games the last couple of seasons. Finally healthy. Makes the tackle. It'll be a loss on the play. So third down and about three. Got to get pressure from the defensive line position. No sacks this year so far for these young men. Card complete. And Isaiah Jones reaches out. This is going to be close. Depends on the spot. Yeah, they got it. They get the first. Shane Carton, the Conference USA Player of the Year last year. Of course, ECU now in the American Conference. After 13 years in Conference USA, they're one of the favorites. Down the middle of the field. Isaiah Jones can't reel it in. There's Tim Scott again. It was a similar throw in play earlier when he made that leaping catch. He just turned around a little too early to get his hands up on that. But again, that's just the combination and the, and the practice and the reps they get and get on one on one to get better and have a connection. You know, when you run this kind of offense, Anthony, I would think it's easy to get recruits. It's a fun on. That's another big play of 16 yards. And again, they waste no time getting up over the football. Back to the ground. Allen into plus territory. First down. Shotmer on the tackle, but it's a 13-yard run that time. This offense really prides themselves not only on the catching of the wide receivers, but the blocking. These guys run the football to the perimeter, and these receivers block their behinds off. East Carolina came into the game averaging 512 yards per game. They may get to that on this series. Allen again. It'll bring up second down and seven after that run. Shotmer, Donnie Miles combined on the stop as we go under 10 minutes here in the third quarter. East Carolina 2 and 1 after the upset of number 17, Virginia Tech. North Carolina undefeated coming into this game at 2 and 0. Shane Carton wastes no time getting it out of his hands to Isaiah Jones. It's a short game, four yards. And they'll bring a third and call it a long four. His defense has to find a way to stop East Carolina on third down. It's been tough. They have so many options. Shane Carton is so good at finding that open receiver and finding the holes. Tar Heels have to find a way. And they've been good on third down today. Eight for 11. And it's dropped this time. Should have been caught, but there is a marker down. And North Carolina cannot believe it. Dez Lawrence, it appears, is going to be called for the pass interference. And you'll see, he grabbed his, his jersey. That's why it's off his pad now when we show this after they make this call. Tom Kreesh. First down. Mike was cutting out a bit there, but he did identify Dez Lawrence with the pass interference. Dez is going to grab his jersey right there. That's, that's an easy call for the back judge. So now first down for East Carolina. They're on the march again. Carton from the pocket. Locks it up deep. And incomplete Justin Hardy. Tried to adjust to that football, well covered by Donnie Miles. Hardy's going to run to the corner of the end zone. 
I'd say he's got great skill level to adjust to the football. Good play, though, by the defensive backs of North Carolina. They've made some plays on the football. There's just been so many of them in this game. Hardy, five catches for 68 yards. He's got 10 career 100 yard receiving games, including 111 at South Carolina a couple weeks ago. Three wide right, one to the near side. Carden is going to run. And he's chased and dragged down at the 32 yard line by Tyler Powell. The true freshman defensive tackle who they are fired up about in Chapel Hill. Former high school wrestler who loves the fact that he doesn't have to cut weight anymore. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> we'll have to wear those trash bags to get that weight. That's a good play by the freshman. And now third and long. Another long drive here for ECU. This is play 11. Again, third and long. Defense needs to step up. Incomplete. That was almost intercepted by Lawrence. Powell being looked at on the sideline. Meanwhile, Warren Harvey is going to come out for a 49-yard attempt. His career long is 54. He had one blocked earlier. Gets this one off. No good. So North Carolina will get the football back. And East Carolina with a couple of missed field goals today. Marquise Williams, and you talked about this before the game, Anthony. He takes a lot of punishing hits. Yeah, last uh, two weeks ago against San Diego State, took eight shots, and you see again, as a runner, he takes a lot of hits. And in the pocket with this young offensive line, he's been taking some shots today also. I'll tell you, though, he's got great poise. He stands in there, and he takes those hits, and he's been able to deliver the football when needed. Six a loss of half point. Williams today. 12 of 18 from inside the pocket, out of the pocket. He has hit a pass yet. He's been hit eight times. He's been hurried seven times. So the pressure from Rick Smith's defense has been very good. Of course, they also have the interception return for a touchdown. Wants to throw here. He's pressured again. Gets it off short. Caught by Kendrick Singleton. Another guy who's been quiet in this offense today for the Tar Heels. He gets eight. Hendrick Singleton, they call him Bull. He's a cross between a tight end and a wide receiver in this offense. And Williams has to deal with so many ups and downs. He gets a bad snap. He's got to create the play. I mean, there's a lot on this kid's shoulders. I think he's handled it well. It's a big third down. They've got to convert here to case they with this East Carolina offense. Third down, he's not been kind to them. Third and three. And they got it. Catch made by Howard. They're going to move the chains. Sophomore from Rochelle, Georgia. And he stands in the pocket. Pressure coming at him once again. They continue to put running backs on their best pass rushers on the outside. That's a win for East Carolina when they get that matchup, but they're able to get the pass off there. Good job by Williams. Williams throws incomplete. Going up the sideline was Singleton. It was again Williams picking himself up off the turf. It seems like every time we turn around, he's doing that. Again, the running back's got to get him down. Those little hits there take their toll on quarterback. Williams sprints out. He'll keep it on the option. Here come Montice Overton. Sam linebacker brings him down. It's going to bring up third down and long again. That last third down conversion for North Carolina was their first third down conversion in eight attempts. I mean, they went a long dry spell without a third down conversion. We'll see if they can put two in a row together. The offensive line has to protect. He needs that extra second so he can deliver a catchable football. Hit. Got rid of it. Incomplete. Pressure coming off both edges. And Williams gets knocked down again. And the heels will have to kick. 
It's about pressure. It's about getting to the quarterback. Look at the top of the screen, the left tackle. He's had a long day today going against Overton. Brandon Williams there to clean it up. It's been pressure not this game. It's been pressure the last game. This offensive line is young. We talked about it, Clay. But we got to get improvement for them for North Carolina to be successful in this game. Tommy Hibbert to punt. Hardy back to return. He's standing at the 15-yard line. He steps up, calls for the fair catch at the 20. Here's a look at Shane Carden, stay the quarterback for East Carolina. Yeah, you see the underneath routes, 0 to 15, have been outstanding. And out here, 0 for 4, 1 for 4. And you know what? You can attribute that to Cam Worthy not being there. He's been the big target, the high point catcher on the outside. So they've gotten that big playability from all the receivers, but they're missing that outside playmaker with Worthy down. Shane Carden, arguably the great greatest quarterback to ever play here at ECU and they've had some good ones he throws the three on Allen who's hit behind the line of scrimmage that's going to be a big loss in play of about seven yards as junior non condi knocks him down the second down and long think of some of the quarterbacks they've had here Anthony David Gore Jeff Blake they both played for a long time in the NFL and Shane Carton statistically has put to get put together a really good career here And driven out inside the five. Brian Walker, a touchdown saving push out of bounds. But what a run for Allen. What a game this young man's having. 85 yards. Impressive. I'll tell you what. He's been the key. We have all these passing yards, but his ability to have balance with this offense has been incredible. Carton. Touchdown. What an offensive machine this team has. Passing. Running. Carton. It's the head pirate on this ship. He's got some great passion. And you know, when you watch those games on tape, their first three football games, they barely ran the football. They couldn't get it going. They were okay with it, but they kept working and working. And this offensive line, let's give them credit, Clay. Pass protection, opening up those holes, blocking on the perimeter. It's been a great job. Well done. Scoring drives in this game. Well, what did you say last year? Cooper had 186 yards. Well, guess what? Breon Allen, he's got 184, two touchdowns, so he's answered the bell today again. And Breon Allen. 15 carries, 184 now, two touchdowns, and he almost had a third. 49-27 East Carolina, which racked up 603 yards of total offense against the Tar Heels in Chapel Hill last year. Uh, they're going to do that again. It's 562 now for the Pirates. And they've still got five plus to play here in the third quarter. North Carolina needs to answer again. Elijah Hood. They're that explosive. I mean, you talk about their passing game and how explosive that's been early in the season. But the difference is the running game. What they've been able to do on those big runs has really set them apart in this game. Hood will be toppled over at the 30 yard line. So another third down. Fairly long coming up for North Carolina. Smith, he's going to keep dialing it up until they block it up. And he's got those pass rushers on the end, number 48, falls at 51 over 10. They've been ruining the tackles day for North Carolina. Williams running for his life again and sacked. Jonathan White. Again, edge pressure, folks. These defensive ends stand up 
rushers for East Carolina have too much speed around the outside. These tackles cannot handle the speed. And if you've got to step up in the pocket, you're talking about some big boys now that can get there. White, Rose, Williams, all these guys have the speed and the agility to make those plays. Third set for this East Carolina defense, and that was nearly blocked. A fair catch at the 25. There's a penalty flag down the field, actually a couple penalty flags. But a reminder coming up, Arkansas and Northern Illinois, from Fayetteville, Five Hour Energy brings it to you. And the game is going to start probably at another network because we are going to go along here in Greenville tonight. Northern Illinois and Arkansas on ESPNU. Good ball. Personal foul, number nine in North Carolina. 15 yards, set good ball spot. First down. Again, composure. These games, they start getting out of hand a little bit. Tempers start to flare. Young team. These are all learning, teaching points for this North Carolina football team, who again, with three minutes left in the third quarter, down by 22 points. They can get a stop here, continue to go, continue to roll. They're not completely out of this game. A lot of time left, but the defense has a lot of pressure on them right now. How times have changed in this rivalry. It used to be North Carolina could consider this a win on their schedule. Not the case. Certainly wasn't the case last year. It doesn't look like it's going to be the case this year. As Marquez Grayson makes the hit against Ethan Farmer. To be as a defense line, you have to push it up the field and stop the perimeter push and that slide. He does a good job, contains the running back, makes the stop. Cut. Complete. Hardy. Another explosive play for this East Carolina offense as they're basically doing what they want now. Down to the 37-yard line. And those yellow gloves, you know what those are? They're, that's the target for Carter. And what a, he just plucks the ball. He's so smooth. Just a matter of time before he gets involved in the second half here. That's 10 plays of 20 plus yards for East Carolina. That's a 24 yard pickup. Allen. Brought down by DeJuan Trenton. Second down and five. And Vic Koning, the defensive coordinator in North Carolina, he talked about this. It's a, a catch 22. You play man and they beat you in their zones, and you, you play zone and they beat you in space. So it's a tough call for a defensive coordinator to stop this passing game of East Carolina. They've relied on the takeaway the first couple of games. They've only been able to intercept Carton one time. As Allen spins for another first down. Great effort after the initial contact by the senior from Daytona Beach. And there's the defensive coordinator, Vic Koning. All he can do is kind of look down at his chart and say, what do I have to do to stop this machine? It's tough. You know, it's tough when you have balance for East Carolina. I mean, you're trying to get your rush lanes on the pass, and then you got to get your lanes for the running attack. So this is not going to be just tough for North Carolina. The rest of their schedule, whoever East Carolina plays, will be challenged. Now look at American Conference. Here come the newcomers on the street. Isaiah Jones, a race to the pylon again. Touchdown, Pirates! And another six for the Buccaneers. <laughs> Position. 56-27. 11 plays at 20 yards or more. I'll tell you what, what an advantage now. And there is Mr. Cut, 27 of 44. He is crowding 400 yards passing. He's got four touchdown strikes. He was picked off early, but it didn't phase him. And that's a sign of a good quarterback. You know, can you shake it off? Have a short-term memory. And that's what's good about him. He just he's, he plays up to the maturity and level of where he is. Well, North Carolina is going to bring Mitch Trubisky, the redshirt freshman quarterback, back into run this series. On 
First down, Trubisky. Throws, complete, caught at the 35-yard line by Bud Howard. Bring up second and about three. I want to get back to Carton for a second. You played in the NFL. You played with some pretty good quarterbacks. What is going to keep him from playing in the NFL, if anything? Well, you know, I think he's going to play at the next level. He's got to clean up his footwork a little bit. You know, the little details that if he gets... I would love to see him go to a team that has an established quarterback, somewhere where he can learn from maybe an Aaron Rodgers or a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning, somewhere where he can get those years and develop on the sidelines to hone his skills in. Because I'll tell you what, he's got the ability, the mindset, the moxie to play the position. He's going to get that chance. That would be the ideal position for him. He's going to bring up third down and about three here for North Carolina. One of the knocks on Carden before last week was that he hadn't really beaten an elite team. Well, now it appears that he's going to do it two weeks in a row. 33, Trubisky. What, what a punish and hit. Switzer driven down hard by Lamar Ivey. He got the first down, but he's going to remember that. No, he dropped it. Pardon me. That was incomplete. They started to move the chains, but Switzer didn't come up with the ball. What a great play by the strong safety, Lamar Ivey. And you can see the electricity of this crowd, and these players are just feeding off of it. I'll tell you, this is a great advantage. These fans have been great. It's been a great atmosphere here in East Carolina. Of course, another North Carolina punt. This one coming to the sideline. It's going to go out of bounds near the 20-yard line. East Carolina, they're becoming notorious for these long games because of the amount of passes and the amount of points that they rack up. Last week, four hours in Blacksburg. We're going to go over that today. Knocked behind the line of scrimmage and thrown down as Chris Hairston. Nazir Jones, the big defensive tackle, makes the play. You know, and to go back to what you were saying about Harden, about not playing and beating the big teams, all the scouts have to do is pop in the Virginia Tech tape. They blitzed 22 times in that tape. Man-to-man -man coverage, he had to come up with quick decisions. That's where they'll find out where this kid can really play. East Carolina, 56 points on 31 first downs and 613 yards of total offense. That's 10 more yards than they racked up against North Carolina in the win in Chapel Hill last year. And we're only through three quarters, and a record crowd has seen it here today. Well, you've been hyping this game up all week on Twitter, and the fans have responded, and they've come out to see East Carolina. Sam Jones. Close to midfield, knocked out at the 49-yard line. That's a gain of 22. Jones is closing in on 100 yards today. In fact, he just went over. And we talked about the 34 missed tackles. You see number six, Stort, missed a tackle on the outside. Creates a big play. Again, this team is young. It's still learning. Boy, they are relentless. Another completion. That's Trevon Brown. Brown of touchdowns. He's well over 100 yards today. That's his fifth catch. Give him 13 on that play. They're definitely keeping their foot on the pedal here. They're not uh, subsiding at all. This North Carolina defense. All still Harden. 6'2", 221, fifth-year senior out of Houston, Texas, who is starting to be talked about around the country. Someone to keep an eye on. The American Conference definitely get a list of him this year. They're from that league as Anthony Scott carries for a couple of yards. Look at the distribution. Several receivers, the running backs getting in the act. That's crazy. I mean, look at the depth. We talk about Brandon Bishop. He wasn't even on my card. They put him in there. He gets a touchdown. I tell you, they're just plucking him. Great job recruiting. A lot of these guys are walk-ons. They just see the potential, find the diamonds in the roughs, and they respond by their great play. Isaiah Jones again. Knocked him off his rhythm. And the credit that 
athletic offensive line of East Carolina. Now Carton will keep and he'll back his way. It appears to the first down. I got to give credit to the inside receivers coach, Donnie Fitzpatrick. The outside, these guys open up their mitts and they swallow up the pill. I love it. Fifth career 400 plus yard day here at East Carolina for the quarterback. He'll hand it off to Allen. First down and more. Finally stopped at the 12 yard line. Sam Smiley. It might have been a tough saving tackle, but it's a gain of 17 as Carolina's in the red zone again. And again, watch the defense. The angles, the poor angles, the missed tackles, running over past the running back. These are all things that they're going to have to correct because they're becoming habits every time you turn the tape on. Allen now over 200 yards today. Team carries. Play fake. Cut to the end zone. Has a man incomplete. He's trying to hit Trevon Brown. Brian Walker in on the coverage. It'll bring up second down. Should have mentioned earlier in this game, one of the receivers for East Carolina, Jimmy Williams, left the field with some kind of injury. He hasn't been back since the first half. With that said, this offense continues to go right along without Williams and Cam Worthy, who's been suspended for this game and the next. And look right here number 96 farmer. He's got a chance to make a tackle in the backfield And that's been the story of this game, especially in the second half East Carolina wearing them down That one's a touchdown Got one guy put his hands up. We got another ref said he's down. They're gonna have to talk about this one right. Line judge running in and he's gonna say and he was stopped outside the end zone. Now they're going to mark him short. They said his knee was down. See if there's an angle. It's close. Second down and goal. 11th play drive here. And that time for sure, Anthony Scott held out. Mikey Fox, back of defensive end, making the tackle, and it'll bring up third down and goal. Good job. Two fists by the defense. Just see the tight off here. Bryce Williams, favorite target in the red zone. Second touchdown run. And just three yards shot of a school record for total offense now. And North Carolina will start this series at the 35-yard line after that return. Pats him on the back. I mean, this guy's views, they all talk about, yeah, he's a great teacher, but he genuinely cares about us as players. Trubisky taking a shot. And caught, but 
didn't run out of bounds is, yeah, it's going to be a completion to Mac Mullins. Big play along the sideline. For the 27-yard line, Carolina, that's a 39-yard reception for Hollins. Great concentration on the outside. Two weeks ago, he had a 91-yard touchdown catch against San Diego State. Trubisky running the offense for North Carolina. He's been going back and forth with Williams. Again, they go to Hollins. This one's going to land incomplete. Going back to Ruffin McNeil. One of his biggest in inspirations on his life and wanted to be on the sidelines here today. He said the two biggest inspirations for me, my dad and Coach Dye. Coach Dye's a legend. He's a good man to learn from. First went on to coach at Auburn. One up the middle for Hood. Hardly any operating room, so it's going to be third down and long. There's Dye giving a pep talk to Coach McNeil and also Carton. And Carton is going to listen to that man. <laughs> I think I just read read the lips of Robin McNeil. He said, "Hey, listen to what he's got to say." It's <laughs> great. He rubs he rubs those kind of people off of some of his players. He knows those people were instrumental in his career and his coaching career. Why not share some of their inspiration to some of the players? It's great stuff. Ryan Switzer on that catch. It's going to bring up fourth down here for North Carolina. And the fourth and three from the 20. Down 63 27. They're going to keep the offense out on the field. Mitch Trubisky. Low snap. Comes up firing and completes it to Ryan Switzer to keep the drive alive. Nice throw and catch, Switzer. Extremely quick slot receiver. One of the best premier punt return men in the country. It's hard to, hard to guard when you got a guy like that with that kind of speed. Screen pass. And a penalty play. We might have 12 guys on the field for East Carolina. They were running some subs in late. It was a substitution. Defense. 12 men in formation at the snap. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Sorry to you folks that are tuning in to watch Arkansas in Northern Illinois. We're going to be here for a little bit. As that game is getting started on ESPN 3. North Carolina picked fourth in the ACC Coastal preseason poll. As Trubisky throws to the end zone, it's a touchdown. Jack Tab, the tight end with a 10-yard touchdown catch. But there is a marker on the field. Okay, he took a big shot. Great job. Good concentration by Tab on catching that football, not allowing it to get jarred out. Be close to see if this is a head-to-head -head hit by the defender. I know they're talking about that now. I hate to see that late in the game. The result of the play is a touchdown. We have a personal foul targeting Ooh. number 21 in the defense. 21 has disqualified himself from the base game. By rule, that play is under automatic review. After review. The player who actually committed the foul was number 22, and his ejection has been confirmed. So we'll say goodbye to Terrell Richardson. Out for the rest of this game, the first half of next week's game against SMU. The extra point. Explosive number one. Uh, they got great team chemistry. And this defense, who's only returning three starters, is starting to grow every single game. And Coach McNeil said, listen, they're not quite there yet, but they're getting close. Onside kick recovered by East Carolina. He's a facilitator. He distributes the football and gets it to open players. And it really doesn't matter. You're just, really, you're not numbers. You're not a guy. He just delivers the football to the receiver that's open. That's a great sign when you talk about quarterback. And he's going to take the rest of the game off, it appears, as Ken 
or excuse me, Kurt Benkert is in the game now. Card 438 through the air, four touchdowns was picked off early, but it didn't phase him. As East Carolina has now gone over the old school record for total offense, it was 687 before the day started. They're at 696. Kurt Benkert, the right shirt freshman out of Cape Coral, Florida. One quarterback now, second down and one. First down. As Marquez Grayson picks it up. Benkert played the entire fourth quarter against North Carolina Central in the season open. He's six for eight for 50 yards and an interception. They really like his arm. In fact, Lincoln Riley says he has an elite arm, and he's certainly going to be involved in the competition to replace Carton next year. Yeah, they say they have a few other players on their depth chart, but he'll be in front to start that race, and, and he couldn't stop raving about the strength of this young man's arm. First down from the 47 of North Carolina. Even the backups are getting it done. Here's Hurston. Pushed out of bounds at the four-yard line. Even the second teamers, Anthony. Listen, you got to find ways to stop this team. I mean, this is a simple perimeter play. Yeah, you, they get it blocked up, but you got to beat your one-on-one -on -one blocks. Defensive coordinator Vic Coney talked about these guys got to toughen up. They got to win their one-on-one -on -one battles. They got to get more energy. They had it early, but you got to do it for four quarters. It's just been a tough go for this North Carolina defense. Crowd is relentless, too. Touchdown, Benford. this game is for this program. I'll tell you, I've been watching North Carolina football a long time, Clay. I don't know the last time somebody scored. Well, it'll be 70 after this point, but 69 points. I haven't seen 69 points scored in a while against a team from a major conference. Hard Harvey. For another extra point. 70 to 34. All right. There you see the school record falls here tonight for East Carolina. A 39-year-old school record. 748 yards of total offense. Still seven and a half minutes to go before this one is over. And they have put 70 points on the board, the most that a North Carolina defense has ever given up. T.J. Logan on the return, and it's a good one. He might go. There's a flag down, and Logan is also down at the 19-yard line. The flag is over here on the near side of the field. Offside on the kicking team. The five yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the run. First down. You see, there's no quit in North Carolina. Good job on special teams. You get a big return. Again, you got to build and find something to build off of. He talked about special teams had not made plays in their first two games for North Carolina. So that's one phase that's gotten better today. Now, Larry Fedora, in his six seasons as a head coach at Southern Miss and now in North Carolina, he's never had fewer than seven wins. But this is a, a game that kind of defines how good North Carolina may be going forward because 2-0 coming into this one, but they haven't really been tested yet. That's incomplete intended for Bug Howard. San Diego State, not necessarily a bad team, but certainly not a power five program. And they had to come from behind to win that game. We'll see how North Carolina is going forward. Pick fourth in the ACC preseason poll for the Coastal Division. But they're young. 
and you can see it at times. This is a touchdown run for Romar Morris. Use that good speed to get in the end zone from 14 yards up. That makes it 70 to 40 with the PAT pin. Larry Fedora, 14 wins through his first two seasons at North Carolina, despite being short on scholarships. That's been part of the problem at UNC here in recent years. You know, we talked about it before the game, during the week, that there were some holes. You know, when you watch the film, they had holes in their defense. For North Carolina, the next three, Anthony, are real tough. They had Clemson. And North Carolina is 2-11 at Clemson since 1982. They host Virginia Tech, which will be a tough out. And then they go to South Bend. They're 0-11 at Notre Dame all time. So North Carolina has a tough road to hoe, and uh, they're going to be licking their wounds after this one. Well, you know, to me, when they turn this tape on, uh, even though the score is what it is, you can get better. I mean, you're talking about being in the right spot, being able to make the tackles, you know, where your adjustment is at a defensive line, holding your point in gaps, and just, you know, getting some continuity on offense. Again, I'm not a big fan of taking the quarterbacks and switching them out like they did early in the game, but, you know, I, I like Williams. I think he brings something unique to the table. He's a good quarterback, and I think they got a lot of things moving forward that'll be positive for this, this North Carolina team. Kurt Benkert hands off. Anthony Scott run it on the left side for a yard or two. And don't forget about that big one. The ACC tonight, Florida State hosting Clemson. Gets underway in about a half an hour from now, Saturday Night Football on ABC. Again, no Jameis Winston, not just for the first half, the entire game as Florida State changed that suspension from 30 minutes to 60 minutes because of those rude comments he made on campus this week. You know, it's disappointing to see that, too. You know, he's got the other 11 guys on offense, the other 11 guys on defense, the guys on special teams, he's letting them down. They're expecting huge things for that team. It'll be interesting to see how they hold up against Clemson tonight. And North Carolina will face Clemson next week. And whether Clemson wins or loses tonight, it's going to be a tough contest for the Tar Heels, especially after what's happened here in this game. But keep in mind, North Carolina last year, Got out to a one and five start and then rattled off six wins out of their last seven, including the Belt Bowl. It turned out to be a positive season for Larry. For really was. Bunch. That's impressive. I mean, you know, it's hard to do mentally. At least he knows he's been through it and he can get these guys to continue to play. That's a good sign moving forward. They, all, they will be two and one after this game. So, again, still a lot of positives to go off of moving forward. Scott with the first down. Gain of nine. Let's check in in the studio for an update. All right, Brendan Fitzgerald back in studio. Here's what's going on right now. East Carolina, North Carolina, that's on ESPNU. Arkansas can be seen on ESPN2. When you guys conclude there, Arkansas will move back to ESPNU. All right, Brendan, thank you. Yes, we will get this wrapped up eventually. <laughs> as we are four hours old right now. Anthony Scott, the true freshman running back, still on his feet now. Mikey Bart brings it down at the 36 yard line. Go sit down. Go sit down. <laughs> the officials have to get in there. Some tempers are probably starting to flare, especially on that North Carolina side. There's no question about it. Obviously, it's a frustrating game. You know, you're down by, by 29 points uh, in the fourth quarter. And you know, these, these players are competitive. Nobody wants to lose like that again. They only have a short week. You only get six days to get ready for your next game. So be important to use those teaching moments as a coaching staff, turn it into a positive, and get these young men ready to play next week. Ben Kurt on second and nine, hands it off again. I'll keep the clock moving as Scott is driven down. It'll be third down and long. Can't say enough about Ruffin McNeil. 
fifth year head coach played defensive back here at East Carolina this program means so much to him and he has turned it around he was a longtime assistant before coming back to East Carolina in 2010 this is his first head coaching job and this is the one that he always wanted yeah former player here uh, he truly cares and loves his players I mean you can see it I mean, you know, he almost draws a tear when you talk to him about his team because each individual player he cares about, he he's truly wants to know what's going on in their lives and helps them as young men become adults. Yet another third down pickup for ECU. And here's the schedule for the Pirates. They're on by next week, and then they've got their first ever American Conference game against SMU. And then they're at South Florida, Connecticut, Temple, Cincinnati, Tulane, Tulsa, and Central Florida. How do you see them navigating the American in their first year? Well, I see Cincinnati, obviously, and, and they'll end on a game versus UCF. Uh, those will be their two stiffest competitions. I mean, if they go out there and play like this, it's going to be hard for those other teams to compete with them. Good catch. And a great run after the catch for... A first down. Jonathan Wayman, who's listed on the roster as a quarterback, makes a first down reception. Yet another player getting involved in this offense. A record setting night on offense for ECU. It's always good to see young men play. You know, you never think you're going to get in the game. You go deep down the roster and they get chances to go out there and play football, play on national TV represent their fans their families that's fun i'll tell you it's exciting they get to go out there and show their stuff after that pickup they are 75 percent on third down tonight 12 of 16. It'd be hard to stop and they're taking that play clock down as long as they can and, and frankly i'm sure north carolina is grateful it's been an exhausting night for that Carolina defense. Marquez Grayson, the redshirt freshman. With that carry. The play, you remember, if you go back in this game to start the second half, 35 to 20, North Carolina was down. They had a third and two. They get up to the line, they run a QB sneak, they get the first down. Coach Fedora, you know, calls a timeout, didn't like the play call. And they got the interception on the next play, took it to the house, and that kind of changed the complexion yeah, of the game. So, you know, not that that was the single moment, but we talk about coming out of the, the tunnel in the second half, trying to get something started. Just bad luck. The running play, it's going to bring up third down as Grayson is stopped short. At the 31-yard line. You know, the first conference game, they're going to be battle-tested. Week play. Yeah, you play South Carolinas, you play the Virginia Techs, you play North Carolina. I would say pre-conference, that's a pretty good schedule. So if I'm a committee member, as this goes down the road and they start winning, you know, they're, they're going to find themselves in one of those big bowl games moving forward. Right now, they're eight yards short of 800 total yards of offense. Flare it up. Quay Johnson is going to be dropped for a loss. And it'll bring up fourth down. That's going to do it. What an impressive win for Ruffin McNeil's East Carolina Pirates over in state North Carolina. They're from the Power 5 ACC, but the power was on the side of the Pirates tonight, especially on offense. A school record, 789 total yards. Shane Carton, 438 through the air and four touchdowns. If the country didn't know anything about this team, they know about them now. Anybody that puts up 70 points against an ACC team or a Big 5 opponent is someone to be reckoned with. So, again, East Carolina is someone to watch as we move forward into this college football season.